All creatures of our God and King. Oh, my soul, bless God. God, my God, how great you are, beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine and all heaven stretched out for your tent. You built your palace on the ocean deeps. You made a chariot out of clouds and took off on wind wings. You commandeered winds as messengers, appointed fire and flame as ambassadors. You set earth on a firm foundation so that nothing can shake it, ever. You blanketed earth with ocean, covered the mountains with deep waters, and then you roared and the water ran away. Your thunder crash put it to flight, and mountains pushed up, and valleys spread out in the places you assigned them. You set boundaries between earth and sea. Never again will earth be flooded. You started the springs and rivers, sent them flowing among the hills. All the wild animals now drink their fill, wild donkeys quench their thirst. Along the river banks, the birds build their nests, ravens make their voices heard. You water the mountains from your heavenly cisterns, all earth is supplied with plenty of water. The water here is cold, low in nutrients, but high in oxygen. The few creatures that live in the torrent have to hang on for dear life. Invertebrates dominate these upper reaches. The helgramite, its body flattened to reduce drag, has bushy gills to extract oxygen from the current. Blackfly larvae anchor themselves with a ring of hooks. But if these become unstuck, they're still held by a silken safety line. advantages to life in the fast stream. Bamboo shrimps can just sit and sift out passing particles with their fan-like forearms. Amazing how God made just those few creatures streamlining the Helgramite's body for life's sometimes very fast and difficult currents. Building things into you and me that allow us to adapt to something that could be overwhelming. God builds nets into the bamboo shrimp's very anatomy and gave a lifeline, a second chance, new hope to a black fly larvae. And looking at those stories, it just makes me wonder, do these creatures ever thank God for his wonderful gifts? in a black fly larvae kind of way for that tiny little bit of silky salvation. Is there gratitude? But ask the animals what they think, Job says. Let them teach you. Let the birds tell you what's going on. Put your ear to the earth and learn the basics. Listen, the fish in the ocean will tell you their stories. Isn't it clear that they all know and agree that God is sovereign, that he holds all things in his hand, every living soul, yes, every breathing creature? Isn't this all just common sense, common as a sense of taste? Do you think the elderly have a corner on wisdom that you have to grow old before you understand life, said Job? whose life, it seems, God allowed to slip and get caught in the terrors of the current, got whipped in every direction, wondered what in the world was going on. He was caught in a torrent of suffering, but God only let him slip so far and then grabbed him. 
He said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Usually, these mountain streams only provide enough food for small animals to survive. But with the spring melt here in Japan, monsters stir in their dens. Giant salamanders, the world's largest amphibian, almost two meters long. They're the only large predator in these icy waters. They begin their hunt at night. These salamanders have an exceptionally slow metabolism. Living up to 80 years, they grow into giants. The fish they hunt are scarce, and salamanders have poor eyesight. Sensory nodes on their head and body detect the slightest changes in water pressure. Free from competition, these giants can dine alone. Poor eyesight, but sensory nodes on the top of their heads that can detect the slightest change in water pressure, which allows them to feed, which allows them to sustain their lives, which allows them to live. God provides. God provides, in relation to this little attribute, a means of knowing, a common kind of salamanderish fish sense, a submersed kind of wisdom to his creatures. He's equipped animals, these animals, with an underwater sense of discernment. God has built into you, the pinnacle of his creation, a wisdom to know where you need to go and live how you can and ought to live. He's built critical desires into you and I so that what we yearn for, ultimately, what we desire and need is pointed to, directed to Him. He's put homing beacons inside of a human's heart that makes us just want to find Him, to find our way home, to get back to our God. A divine, ancient, ancient instinct. And God has put morality into your being the Apostle Paul says he's written it into our minds, the sense of good and bad. Whether we really know it or not, God has put it inside of us. God has even put, for some of us, himself in us to show us the way, to feed us, to sustain us. His Spirit, now written on your heart, God's wisdom can be seen in all of the creatures that he has made, seen in how he equips us and holds us, all of his creatures in creation. Have you been seeing it in your life? Are you seeing the author in behind a planet Earth type series or anything like that? Are you sensing what's going on and seeing the face of your Maker, the Maker, in behind it all. Can you hear His voice? Wisdom is calling out everywhere. <laughs> 